But now, the headline act himself, I'd like to invite up Professor Sir Michael Marmot to reveal his findings. Please join me in welcoming him to the stage. It's great to see you here. Uh, I said when we began this journey that we wanted to create a social movement and I think the representatives of that social movement are sitting right here in this room. Thank you. As I've said, the health of a society tells us a great deal about how well that society is doing. If health is not flourishing, the society is not flourishing. And there are big inequalities. You can see that the less deprived, the longer the life expectancy. For the least deprived 10%, I've got women here, least deprived 10%, there are regional differences, but they're relatively small. For the most deprived 10%, the regional differences are much bigger. We've got used to the fact that life expectancy and health improves year on year. That's what we've come to expect. And it's not happening anymore. This is a health crisis. We don't know quite what is the other factors underpinning this change that we see. Um, but we think that quite a lot of it is to do with uh, austerity. Some of it may be about uh, other more structural reasons to the economy, what's happened to industry, for example, in some deprived areas. And there could be very complicated cultural and social reasons why health expectancy is stalling. But something is very profound that is going on, and it's something that we have to get to the bottom of as a, as a nation if we want to flourish in the future, because without health, we won't be a flourishing society. Yes. Life expectancy has reduced in some of our poorest communities, particularly women in parts of the north of England. So you have to face up to the full reality if you're going to make things uh, better. We should have a situation where health is always improving, and that clearly has stalled now. And this review has told us that, and told us some of the reasons why that is happening. And it's now about correcting those things, uh, and hopefully improving life for everybody. It's all there. We can create a new consensus here if the government is in the room and if they are facing up to what is, life is really like in the north of England for the people they keep talking about. Well, actually, this is their lives on this screen. And where are they? They're not in here to listen about it. They should be in here to listen about it. People have had a hard decade, a hard decade. So on behalf of you all, I would just like to say thank you to Michael and his team, then and now, for being a voice of sanity, authority, humanity, consistency. I wish I lived in a country where we listened to voices like that. I live in hope that one day we might do. Thanks very much for listening. We have an epidemic on our hands. It's called knife crime. People are dying every single day. I'm just a grown-up mold of those young people. Half the things I've gone through, the trials and tribulations, I've been shot twice, I've been stabbed four times, Many of my young people who I mentor go through the same things. However, I'd managed to get A-levels and GCSEs while in prison. I was the first person in the country to get A-levels while in prison. They do not offer GCSEs and A-levels in prisons anymore. What are we doing to our young people? They do not offer mental health provision in prisons anymore. What are we doing to our young people? It's absurd that we have an epidemic like we do on our hands but nobody's funding anything. I think this is a devastating and shocking report, but such an important report. And I think, as one of the speakers have said today, we are facing a health emergency, and I hope this report uh, provokes urgent action from government. The thing we took for granted, which is a growing economy reduces absolute poverty, has not been happening. And in fact, last year it actually managed to tick up, which is really quite impressive. Like, developed economies don't do that in general outside of big recessions. The biggest thing that could be done is for lots of people over different organisations and communities to come together and say this is not acceptable, it can and must change. The biggest thing that would make a difference would be to have the will to want to change it. We've said that the Prime Minister should make a priority for the national government reduction of health inequalities and to that end he should chair a cross-ministerial committee 
galvanizing action across the whole of government to take the steps necessary to reduce avoidable health inequalities.